How's everybody doing today? Okay, we got some pretty uh, intense and exciting stuff that I'm going to go over. Um, of course, we're starting from uh, this uh, drawing that was given to Francois of Rochefoucauld in the 1600s. And we've already gone over a lot of this, but today we're going to focus on the connection between Francois Rochefoucauld and Louis I, the lion cub of Talmont. And we'll start up here at the top uh, right hand corner and we will read this uh, translation. And it says, This drawing for M. Francois Rochefoucauld, one small drinking glass of learning. So I want you guys to think about how this is written. Okay, uh, it's to French, Francois uh, Rochefoucauld and uh, one small drinking glass of learning. It's very uh, metaphorical um, and if you, when we go farther, you'll find that it has somewhat of a social component of drinking and learning. And we're also going to get a little bit into uh, the lion cub of Talmont, which we have determined is Louis the first, and I'm like 100% convinced that that is who it is. And of course, uh, the 1347 fits right into the time period of Louis the first. So I'm going to go to my notes that I prepared for you guys, and it's taken me a long time. I was wondering how I was going to present this to you, but I have lots of information and I can only give you just a little bit at a time. And I wish I could tell you it all. It's pretty exciting. But uh, we'll first start off with Louis I, the Lord of Talmont. He was the Lord of Talmont at the end of his life. And uh, that, I mean, his family starts out with the House of Ambrose. This is the first house that uh, his ancestors belonged to, okay? And the House of Ambrose was one of the oldest French nobility houses. Uh, it dates back to the 12th century. And it goes even back earlier than that. Uh, we'll see in later videos how far back that goes, but this... It took the name of the House of Ambrose in uh, Touraine. And this is an interesting area because Touraine, uh, its name is a Celtic. So we're sort of seeing that he comes from Celtic origins, which fits into the Norman. He's a Norman. But also, uh, you look and see that it's also a place where the Castle of Shannon is. And if we read down further, the Castle of Shannon is the place where they held the Knights Templar in 1307 and executed the leader of the Knights Templar, Jack de Molay. So you're wondering, does Louis I have a good connection with the Knights Templar, or is he part of the execution of the Knights Templar? Well, we're going to find out later. I'm not going to get into that today. It's pretty exciting. But uh, there is a connection uh, with the Knights Templar and another organization called the Knights Hospitaller. And we're going to find out later that these two organizations were on one side, the French, and on the other side, the English. And uh, the... Getting into the the king of France, Philip the Fourth, wanting to execute them, may not have been that he owed them money, but he wanted what they had, and there was a big fight about it. This is speculation, and I'm going to get more into some more hard evidence of maybe how that could be. But uh, to go on here. Uh, the loyalty of Louis I was first he came from the House of Ambrose, and then that turned into the House of Thars, 
okay, which is an area in Lower Brittany in France. And the House of Far Thars fell under English control uh, in 1361. It actually fell uh, into control uh, before that um, by uh, another English uh, house called the House of Planet, and that is was the current English um, house that took over England in the 11, 1100s. So, but at this time, we're sticking around the time of 1347. Uh, the House of Thars uh, was taken over by the English in 1361. And the House of Thars, okay, actually is the House of Tremolay. It's the same house. And this is another house that uh, Louis I was associated with. The House of Thars is actually older, and the House of uh, Tremolay came afterwards, but he belonged to all, all these houses. And he actually became a prince of Tremolay. Now the important part that's going to be very important in this is the Hundred Years War. It is one of the motivations of why the treasure left Europe and who took it from Europe. And the Hundred Years War was a war between Louis, uh, between the French nobility and the English nobility, and the English wanted to take part the take the parts of France that they had lost in previous reigns of their reign. Now the English royalty that was is running England at this time come from the Plantagenet. Uh, family and they were French so the people that really were in Fran uh, England at the time were of a French and they had a very bad history of quarreling with Louis the first houses so he was very much not in uh, the house of England and he was very much aligned uh, allied with Scotland. The, the Hundred Years' War was about the House of Plantagenet and the House of Valois, Valois. And the House of Valois is another, is the other um, loyalty of Louis I. And he was a Valois, which means he was pretty much, very much French uh, and Norman. And he got this by marriage. He married the the uh, Duke of Druze, and the Duke of Druze uh, was uh, very. He he died early, and then after uh, after he died, his uh, daughter inherited it. And then when he married his daughter, uh, he his only daughter. When Louis I married his daughter, then he became the Duke of Druze. And so this is uh, basically the uh, Hundred Years' War was a series of conflicts in Western Europe between the House of Plagnet, which became the House of Lancaster, uh, the rulers of, of England, and the House of Valois. Very important here, okay? And just prior to the Hundred Years' War is when Jerusalem and all the Middle Eastern uh, uh, territories of a lot of the nobility of France and England fell. And it was in 1291 they fell. And I believe, I'm going to show you later, that these uh, this Hundred Year War is really about getting back control of France and also, um, I think, uh, where's the loot from the uh, Middle East that was taken out of there? Uh, these are the titles of Louis I. Okay, he was the Prince of Tre uh, Tremolay. He was a Viscount of Thars. He ended up being the Lord of Talmont and Melion. 
and he was also the Count of Druze. And these are all territories around uh, in lower uh, Normandy in the western part of France. So this is his life, and this is an important part. Okay, first of all, he was married to the Count of Druze, and this is where he gets a lot of his uh, clout at the end of his life. But this is where I want to draw the connection. He, okay, first of all, he he fought in the Hundred Years' War in uh, 1356. And here is one of the main battles that I want to talk about. He fought alongside King John, okay, who was the King of France in the Battle of Poitiers in 1356. Okay? He became the Duke in 1355, and he was the Duke of Druze to 1355. So 1345 to 1355, and he, he lost the Countship of Druze when his wife died. So he went to battle with King John at the Battle of Poitiers, which was a very significant battle because the king of France, King John here, gets captured and goes to England. And it's a very, very bad time for France. Another thing that happened uh, during this time uh, between 1345 and 1355 was uh, the... Black Plague hit for two years, from 1347 to 1349. Um, so, where is it possible that during this time period that he was in Oak Island, 1347, when he was the Count of Drew? Uh, I don't know. Maybe he could have been there. But if what is on this map is true then he was there, or he had some connection to it, because his name is on the map. So, let's get on to the connection to Rashvakald. Oh, and here's, here is a connection to Rashvakald. Louis I was in the Battle of Poitiers. Ra uh, Guy VII de Rashvakald, he, he died in the Battle of Poitiers next to the king of France, okay? Louis I fought on the side, okay? It doesn't mean that he, I mean, he fought by his side. That's what I'm thinking this is saying, because obviously he was going to be on the side of King John. But anyway, you would think that these two gentlemen, the Duke of Druze and this... Uh, Baron, or whatever he was, I don't know what he was, but he was a Rashpakald who was nobility, they would have known each other. Anyway, Louis died in ta at Talmont. So he died at the castle of Talmont. And that's why they say at Talmont. That's the castle in 1370. So let's go to the castle of Tamount, and here it is today in modern time. The castle of Tamount during the Hundred Years' War was owned by the princes of La Tremolay, which is Louis I, and was fortunately spared any damage. However, it did suffer damage during the Wars of Religion. Now here's the important part. In 1628, okay, the king of France, and this cardinal, take note of this cardinal, ordered the demolition of the fortress. So this castle of Talmont was demolished in 1628 to prevent English, prevent the English from uh, quartering there and French Protestants from taking refuge. All right. Now here's an interesting part: is the old castle was used for quarry stone to provide new homes and subse subsequently became overgrown. Well, in 1628, it was demolished and quarried and by Louis uh, the Eighth. 
I'm thinking this is just a speculation or theory that if the documents were found, they were possibly found in 1628 during the demolition of the castle of Tamal. All right, let's go to the 16th century, Francois de Rochefoucauld. Okay, he was a writer. Okay, he wrote and he was very, you know, he was a noble. He very much was into what nobility did. Uh, he was in the military and, you know, he's basically a rich kid. So he did a lot of noble things. But in basically what he became after he got out of the military is he was a writer. And he was a big writer. He was part of a literary classic movement, um, wrote about people and his, himself and political things and moralism, moralism and a lot of uh, philosophy, philosophical things. So Rochefoucauld, eventually, he took his place in a salon. Now what a salon is, Okay, and I don't know when he did this. I'm thinking probably right up during his military career um, at around, you know, 1640. And I'll show you why I mean that. A salon is a gathering place held by an inspiring host during the gathering to amuse one another and increase knowledge through conversation. These gatherings often... These gatherings are often social to people of high influence and station by invitation. Directed by the host, venues of philosophy, poetry, literature, and historical stories either to please or educate. So that's what he was part of. And this was a big part of his life. And here is the lady that I think may have written it. One of the ladies. There's two, actually. Um that may have written this to Francois is this lady right here. Um, she was the daughter of, of this uh, guy who was the tutor of Louis VIII, which was a king. He was also the Marshal of France, which is the highest general position that you can get. So he was very much in the military. And then um, she married in 1614 and he died. And in 1640, here's the, the catcher. In 1640, okay, she, uh, she was in, you know, bad circumstances because her husband died. And her friend, this friend right here, uh, they took rooms at the Palace Royal in Paris. And established, both of them established a literally, a literary salon. So this is the salon in which uh, Rochefoucauld belonged to. Because it says right here, the class of literature, which is the maxims of, of La Rochefoucauld, is one of the best known examples of, that was originated here. So this is the salon that Rochefoucauld would go to. Now, what was happening at the time of why would she give these documents to Rochefoucauld? How did she get them? We don't know. But there may be some possibilities that through her father, her father had them because he was in the military and the military people found them and handed it over to him or up the chain to where it came to him. There's another, uh, there's another person that may have gotten them that had a connection to the Cardinal. But what happened during this time is after the, the castle of Tamant was destroyed, okay, or demol demolished and given quarry stone, the Chateau of De Tremolet was being built. And this was being built, okay, and here's, uh, it, it was located in Thars, where Lewis was from, his whole descendancy was from that area, okay? And they're building this, and here's a little bit of uh, prehistory about that. 
and you can read that and of course it all has to do 1158 you know it was destroyed by you know uh, King Henry the second who was uh, part of the Plantier family okay so the Plantier family didn't like the Thars they didn't and uh, they were English from a French nobility family it's funny that the French actually were the people that dominated in the Middle Ages the uh, rule of France or the rule of England but here is this uh, uh, the chapel of Thars this is another thing that that got built but um, and here's the this is this is the Chateau of Thars so this was being built okay and in the year 16 uh, uh, Henry Tremolay he married this woman in 1628 so in other words when he got married he had the castle of Tamont demolished and then he built in he started building this castle here construction in 1638 so here's this big castle being built in France during this time when uh, Francois de Rochefoucauld was in this writing society and you would think if they if somebody came across something that was of interest to uh, Rochefoucauld which he had a lineage tied back to this family La Tremolet that maybe they thought he might want to write about it. Another person that was really involved with him was this Madame Chave uh, de Chavarous. And here is this uh, lady. She has a, her husband quarrels. She quarrels with her husband and this cardinal. Now this cardinal is the guy that basically uh, uh, ordered the destruction of Talmont, the demolition. So, uh, what they are quarreling about, I don't know. But if if these documents got in the hands of this cardinal, maybe she was the one that gave it to him. So you have two people that have a means of getting the documents to him, and a means of. Uh, a reason why to give it to them. Uh, this lady also right here was a political activist. Okay, um, her name was Marie de Rouen. That's the same as uh, this Madame uh, Chevreuse. So she was uh, very much. She was her father was the ho head of the House of Rouen which is she is a Norman. In other words, her ancestry took part in the Battle of Hastings and that falls right in line with Louis I because also his ancestry took uh, part in the Battle of Hastings. So this lady right here is uh, my number one pick. Uh, she was the person that had the salon and by some me means she may have acquired those either through her father or through her friends. Uh, these two women were probably very uh, much known. Um, she this Madame de Chavarous was, um, her father was the governor or the mayor, uh, was the governor of Paris. And her, and this woman here that ran the salon, she lived in Paris. And they were both really high up in uh, society. So that's what I have. I think there's some connection here. Uh, it's all very speculative, but it does add a little credibility to the map here. 
of La Rochefoucauld. Uh, he probably had an interest in that area. It was a big event that was going on during his lifetime, the building of uh, the castle at La Tremolay, the destruction of the castle of Talmont, and that was most likely um, used as building materials for La Tremolay. And uh, there's a possibility that those documents may have been found during the demolition of Talmont and gotten into the hands of either uh, the cardinal uh, or, and, uh, and or into the hands of the general, uh, the military general, where both these ladies uh, may have had access to copy these, to copy this down and give it to their friend uh, who I think they admired very much and were mentors to him or they were pretty much the same age. I think they just really admired him and uh, gave it to him because definitely Rochefoucauld had a history back in the area. His ancestors died in the Battle of Poitiers right next to Louis I. And I think there's a strong connection and it's very tied into a very heavy, heavily political change time, a very pivotal time in French history is the Hundred Years' War. And especially that battle at Poitiers where, where uh, Rochefoucauld's ancestor died was extremely pivotal in the Hundred Year War. It's when the King of France was captured by uh, England. So there's all I have. It's really hard to try and figure out how to uh, present this to you guys, but there it is. All right, I'll get back to you later when I have more. Thanks, bye.